Welcome. And today we'll dive into a couple of great entitled parent stories and their reactions. Coming up we have. It's basically my wedding. Plus we have. My father buys my old laptop off me, after my entitled aunt demands I give it to her. I just know you're gonna love these stories, so this should be a fun session. Hi, this is Derek, I just put, the drama llama, Fred, back in his pen so that I can do this quick video for you with some of the stuff that Fred found on Reddit earlier today. If this is your first time watching our videos, help me out by watching to the end, and then giving me some feedback in the comment area below. I do respond, to every single one, so don't be shy. And if you want more of these videos daily, don't forget to like and subscribe, with notifications turned on for this channel. Oh boy, let's get ready for some stories. Brigadoon Rose Fall posted. It's basically my wedding. So this is a story about my sister-in-law's mother, that happened just over 8 years ago. My sister-in-law brought this up during a family Zoom call, to which one of my nieces immediately asked for me to write it up here. It's taken a few days since the call to get it all typed. I've ended up with a monster wall of text, but I tried to cut a lot of it out too. The cast for this will be me, Alice, sister-in-law. Helen, Alice's mother, our entitled mother. Ron, Alice's husband and my brother. Fred and George, two of my other brothers. To set the scene, the wedding was set to happen on a farm run by my Aunt Rose. This farm is set up to be photo ready for weddings and events that people wish to have there. It comes with a hefty price tag for a rental, and for her gift to Ron and Alice. Aunt Rose donated the venue and the on-site lodge for all of the guests. Her children donated their time to clean and set the venue up, her husband donated his cooking ability. Other family members provided the ingredients, and there wasn't a whole lot for the bride and groom to actually pay for. The wedding dress was made by Alice, her sister and two of our cousins. The most expensive thing the pair purchased was the rings. Most people would be happy to spend so little on a wedding, but the mother of the bride was a problem from day one. She had to have her say in everything, just, no one listened. It wasn't her day, it was Alice's day. She got progressively more angry, as the family went with Alice's choices and not her ideas. Alice got to design everything, including the wedding cake. Due to her own allergies, she did not want any coconut on her cake. Pretty straightforward request right? She had plans for a beautiful naked cake, decorated with berries, and a very nature-based look. The family adored Alice, but it was very clear that without needing to say anything, we all tuned out Helen, and her terrible demands. Alice had ordered sunflowers, and an array of orange, and yellow roses, and other flowers. They arrived before the rehearsal dinner, and were put in the walk-in fridge, to keep them looking good for the following day. Helen got very emotional when she saw the flowers that night. Fred said he had a bad feeling in his gut, when Helen went off just before the rehearsal started. He didn't get to stop her, or catch her, but she'd gone into the kitchen, and snapped the heads off of the sunflowers. Helen didn't want sunflowers in her daughter's wedding photos. To not stress out the bride or groom, Fred put a text out to the family that had supplied the flowers. He explained that he'd left the rehearsal about six minutes after Helen had, and found, the sunflowers all beheaded. The family member agreed to replace all of them and come over extra early, before the wedding with the needed flowers. She also requested that he save the sunflower heads, and they could do something with the beheaded ones, on the dining tables for the reception. Crisis 1 averted. However, while Fred was dealing with the sunflowers, I was dealing with another crisis altogether. Helen was standing off to the side of the event after finishing the meal. She was on the phone and like my brother, I found a feeling of wrongness, in my gut, so I wandered to listen in. She was talking to her husband, Alice's stepfather, on the phone. She was saying what a great surprise this would be for Alice, and how excited Alice would be to see her stepfather. I stepped into Helen's space, and told her point blank. If that man showed up he would be leaving with more holes than God intended. Helen scoffed off the thread until she saw the look in my eyes. She told her husband she would call him back before hanging up. She told me that she could invite her husband, after all, it was thanks to him, Alice even met her future husband. She would be so thrilled to have him, walk her down the aisle, instead of Alice's own father. It was only right after all. Who wouldn't want someone who abused them so badly, they ran away, and got rescued by a stranger at their wedding? 
I looked over my shoulder, and made eye contact with George. He sensed the brewing trouble, and responded, in the way only George ever responds with. He brought her a fruity sweet drink, and asked if there was a problem. She drank down the drink, as she told him her woes of how I was so cruel to her. He patted her arm, and took her off to the side where he proceeded to keep her glass very full. I went, and warned my uncle to shut the gate, prior to the wedding, and when he found what was going on, he insisted he would keep one of his sons by the front gate, just in case. The party was winding down as the bride and groom separated for the evening. George kept filling up the woman's glass, talking to her as if he was the most sympathetic person to her woes. The drunker Helen got, the more she spilled. She admitted about the sunflowers, because they were such an ugly flower, and her daughter didn't know better. However, around drink four, she admitted that she'd fixed the stupid cake she'd seen in the fridge. George acted like he hated the cake, as well to get out what he could from her, as he found out this woman had wanted coconut cake. The thing her daughter was allergic to. Badly allergic to it. Turned out, she had bought a few tubs of coconut frosting from the store, and spread it over the base cake layer. It was around 3 a.m. when this revelation came out. George kept piling her with drinks as he led her towards the room she was staying in. He told the family via text to check the cake immediately. Once he got her into bed, with the plan to let her just sleep through the morning wedding, she blabbed about how bland the food had looked and she'd made it all better. Then she passed out without further explanation. All of the food was being inspected by the family as Aunt Rose, her husband, and kids set to work with the siblings to fix everything. The cake needed to be remade, the poorly spread coconut frosting had completely ruined the cake. Family members were woken up while the bride, groom, and wedding party were left alone to sleep. George said he would keep an eye on Helen and fix things with her husband. He was going to send the man somewhere completely different, from the wedding venue. The family came together with 12 cars leaving the ranch to go home for various replacements. There was a berry hunt at 4 in the morning, new fish, new bread being made, a new order of steaks being tenderized, and marinated along with a dozen other things. One of my cousins was digging up new sweet potatoes, while his wife and son gathered fresh eggs. Cars came and went all night. I told Alice her mother was sleeping off a hangover, while she was getting dressed for the day and she accepted it rather quickly. She had been told by some of her family that she had to invite her. As she tugged her stockings up, she told me she couldn't believe her wedding was here. She was getting to marry her Prince Charming and Ron, and she was trying not to cry, before getting her makeup done. Helen missed the wedding despite her sister, and her other daughter, trying to wake her up for it. I'm glad to say Alice was in the dark about what happened on her wedding day, until she came back from her honeymoon. Who told her what Helen had done? Why Helen herself? Helen screamed at her daughter the first day, they returned from the honeymoon, and told her how disappointed she was with the wedding she slept through. She wanted Alice to dress in her wedding dress, and take photographs with her mother and her stepfather. Ron put a stop to that real fast. No way was her stepfather ever coming near her again. Helen was blocked. And Alice tried to figure out what all had happened at the event in those wee morning hours. We told her, with everyone coming forward with what they had done, while the couple slept, and rested for their wedding day. Alice thanked us all. And Ron told everyone at the next family get-together, that she couldn't understand how we'd been so calm about it. Aunt Rose told her that in a crisis you can't lose focus. Make a plan, follow through and things will work out alright. Alice took that advice to heart. She's a wedding planner now, and she is a stone wall for brides against their mothers, or any influence besides the husband. It is their day and that's it. Everyone else can shut up and listen to the bride and groom. Hope you all enjoyed. What are your thoughts on this fabulous story? Please share in the comments below. Now here's how some Reddit members reacted to this story. Trex1322 reacted with Coming from someone who is scared to have a full wedding. Because of the drama it will undoubtedly cause, this was an amazing read. Your family is amazing, and I'm glad that Alice has you all on her side. Your Aunt Rose is a genius. It is so easy to say to not stress, make a plan, and get through it. But it is a whole other ballgame to follow through, and act on it let alone coordinate a troop of people to make it work. Camera Dude reacted with George is the real hero of the tale. Took on the job of Belle the cat, 
and save the whole family from the heartbreak of having to wheel the bride into an ambulance due to an allergic reaction. For F's sake. The mother-in-law Helen sounds like she is as toxic as her husband, the abuser. The only difference is the father was left out of the wedding for his physical abuse, while mommy was able to attend to continue her mental abuse. Any parent willing to give their child something they are allergic to should be in handcuffs and sent to jail. What a bunch of great reactions. Now on to the next story posted by Scarlet Absol 13. Titled My father buys my old laptop off me after my entitled aunt demands I give it to her. Side note. Yes, this is the same entitled aunt that called CPS on my father because he refused to co-sign for her to get a new car. This happened in 2016. And is a much lighter story than the first one I told. I bought a new laptop because even though the old one was only a year old, it didn't perform the way I wanted to and was fed up with it. I don't know how my aunt found out I got a new laptop, but she did. A few days after I got my new computer, she volunteered to pick my younger sister up from her high school track practice. And when I went to open the door, my aunt was standing at the door with my sister. "Hi, sweetie. I heard you got a new laptop. What are you planning on doing with the old one?" she immediately asked. I said, "Well, I'm not done transferring the files over to the new one yet, but I'm planning on keeping it around." And she immediately asks, "Can I have it?" I hesitated. "I have a lot of sensitive information on my laptop, and I would rather keep it." And my aunt asked, "Well, can't you just erase all that information?" I explained that it wasn't that easy, and in the wrong hands that information could be used against me, and that I would be keeping the laptop. I didn't tell her that. I didn't trust my aunt's friends, especially after she let an escaped convict live with her for a while, but that's another story for another time. She just huffed and pulled the hole. But we're family. Followed by, I'll be talking to your dad about it. As soon as my aunt left, I sent my dad a text saying how she wanted my old laptop. But I didn't want to give it to her. My dad said that we would discuss things more when he got home and to not give my laptop to my aunt. Well, after dinner my aunt stopped by again. because my sister left a pen in her car and she wanted to drop it off which was a huge load of bull i knew why she was there so my aunt goes so op are you done with your old laptop and i told her no i'm not but i'm not giving you my old laptop she then turned to my father do you believe that she won't give me her old computer she has a new one and my father told her why should op give you her old laptop it's hers she gets to decide what to do with it My aunt goes, "Can't you make her give it to me?" My father. Nope. She's an adult and she bought the laptop with her own money. Not to mention, wife and I were planning on buying it off of her because her younger sister's laptop broke. My aunt, you're going to buy it from her? Father, yep. She bought it with her own money so it seems only fair. My father turned to me. "OP, how much did you pay for your old laptop?" Me. Well, it was $300 when I bought it. My father took out his wallet and said, "Would you take $100 for the laptop?" Me. Absolutely. My father hands me five $20 bills, turns to my aunt and says, "That settles it. I own the laptop now and I'm going to be giving it to my youngest." So, no. You can't have the laptop. My aunt then turned for the door and walked out without another word. Once my aunt left the house and drove off, I asked my father, "Are you seriously buying the laptop off of me?" My dad, "Yep." Me, "You know I would have just given it to my younger sister. You didn't need to buy it." My dad, "I know." Me, thinking my dad was pulling my leg. So I get to keep the money? Dad, "Yep." We were going to need to buy your sister a new laptop anyway, and this way the laptop stays here, and your mother and I save a few hundred dollars. My aunt did something similar a few weeks ago and asked she could have my old phone after I got a new cell phone. After I pointed out that my old phone would only work on the can you hear me now? Good. Kind of network. And unless she had that service provider, the phone would be useless. My aunt dropped the matter. What a great story. Now here's how some Reddit members reacted to this story. The clean mop reacted with Your aunt must be a pain at family meetings. And finally, Rose Pink Camo reacted with, "How is your aunt not in jail? Like seriously?" 
30 totaled cars, no way she can get insurance, false reports, aiding, and harboring an escaped con. And that's just what you've told us. Well, there you have it. A perfectly great set of reactions from a bunch of upstanding citizens. Help support this channel by smashing the like and subscribe buttons. And hit that silly little bell as well to ensure you get the latest videos as they come out. Fred is always finding stuff for me to post regularly. So this is Derek signing off, thanks for watching. Good grief, it sounds like Fred is out of his pen again. He must have found more stories for me to share with you. See you soon.